Hi. Okay, so today we're going to talk about adding your thumb gusset in. And it's the same whether you're doing the beginner glove or the advanced glove. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get that started. You're going to need um, some stitch markers. So I'm using, I'm going to use the blue. Ooh, that looks pretty together. And I only, I only really need one because no matter if you're using five double points to knit or if you're doing our magic loop like this, it's pretty much the same. If you're doing, now I just cast on a few stitches just so I could show you how to do the, the gusset because I'm not, I'm not making these. I am making another pair of the fade walkers, but the colors are so dark that you can't really see the stitches. And I want you to be able to see the stitches as we do them. So that's why I just cast on a few stitches so that we could um, show you how to do it. Now, if you're do if you're using the five double points, you remember one is for your, your work. You're working with that one, but you have four needles that have your material on and they should be divided evenly among all four of them. If you're using the magic loop, like I am here you just have your two needles your two working needles I have it pretty tight I'm sorry you have your two working needles and then you have your cable and I don't have a very long one I think this is probably a 24 inch cable for what I'm doing here um, I do have my stitch marker so let me show you how you get started on the gusset if you're working on the magic loop, you'll work till the end, except for um, one stitch. No, you work the complete end. Okay, so if you're working on the four, you will work through two needles till you come to the end of your second needle, and then you will start your gusset. So let's go ahead and do that first. I only have like 24 stitches on just to show you, but you should have your uh, regular amount, usually what, 68 for the fade walker, and I'm not sure, 40 I think for the uh, regular mitt. So we're gonna go ahead and work to the end, the complete end. We're going to work, I'm working all 12 stitches. Um, those of you doing the beginner, you should work at least half of your stitches 20 and if you're doing fade walker you'll do 34. So once I finished one set half of my stitches I put on a stitch marker and what that tells me is I'm getting ready to make my thumb gusset. Now if you look in between your stitches you have ladders that go between them and mine are pretty pronounced. I tried to make the make it pronounced so you could see it. But the first one on the top is the one that you actually want to grab. And I'm going to grab that from the back. I'm going underneath. This is called a make one right. And the way I remember how to do the right and left, the make one right is you go from the rear, right rear. So if I go from the rear, and then I put them together like this, I'm going to knit out of the front of that stitch. And what I've done is I've actually made one out of nothing, and out of no stitch. So then you're just gonna go ahead and turn your work and either work the entire um, needle on the other side or the other two if you're on five double point uh, four double points so let's go ahead and work that because then i will show you the second row so i'm going to go ahead and knit these 12 stitches it'll probably take you a little longer you're welcome to stop this video while you get to where we're supposed to be Okay, now I'm at the beginning of another round. So you have to remember, if you're using magic loop, you have two needles you have to work to make a complete round. If you're working with the four or five double points, you have to work um, four needles to get to the round. I'm gonna move this up just a little bit closer so that it's easier for me. Okay, so the second row of making your 
gusset beginning is you're just going to knit all of your stitches. So I'm actually going to knit these 12. And again, if you have to stop the video to keep to keep up with me, go ahead. I'm working this on 12 stitches, whereas you guys are working more on yours. Once I get to my stitch counter, I just slip my stitch counter to my right hand needle and I knit that stitch that I made. Okay. And then I go ahead and I knit the rest of my round. I'm working double point or uh, magic loop. So I just work these other stitches until you get, and you can always tell the beginning of your round because you should have your tail. Now, what you need to remember is every other row, you're going to add stitches. And we're going to start doing make left, make right. Okay, so I'm at the beginning of my round again. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so You'll have to follow your pattern to know exactly how to do it, but basically you're going to com continue adding stitches until this starts to come out this way. So let me show you how to do the second and further rows because you'll be making one on each side of your um, markers. So I'm going to go ahead and knit to my marker. And this just takes a little while. Once I get to my marker, I don't slip it at first. Now, we want to make one right, leaning right. So again, we're going to, to take that top yarn. I'm going to go in from the back and I'm going to grab it, put it on my left hand needle. Now, every once in a while, I have to kind of loosen that stitch up so that I can get my needle through it. And did you see what I did? Because it's really hard to get it in like this sometimes. I just go behind and wrap it and then hold it tight in the back so that I still have a little bit of room. So there, I've made one right. I'm going to slip my marker. I'm going to knit my last stitch and then I'm going to make one left. Now, make one left is the opposite. The latter stitch that we have between two stitches, I'm going to go in from the front. I'm going to wrap it on my needle and then we are going to knit through the back of that stitch. So depending on how you wrap, you do the opposite to knit it. And there we have made one leaning left. So the next thing we have to do is finish our row, get to the beginning of our round. Wow, I have really knit tight. I usually am not that tight. I'm working on a, a, a class showing me how to better my, my, uh, uh, my stitches so that they're not so far apart or too tight. And I'm not doing very well right now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and knit through this. If anyone's interested, I'm, I'm taking the t, tkga.org. It is the Knitting Guild Association. And they have, a mass, they have several classes. If you go to that site, you can play around in their site and see what they have. But they have several classes. Um, and I'm going to be starting the Master Knitters classes. So go ahead and look at that. They have a lot of good information. If you join, they have lots of um, articles on there that they share with you also. Okay, now I've already done my increase. So my odd row, this is an odd row, is I'm just going to knit through all of my stitches. And you can see 
once we get to the end, you will see how our gusset is starting to form a V. And I will show you that in just a minute. Again, if I'm going too fast knitting through my 12 stitches compared to your 34 or 20 stitches, <laughs> just stop your video. Okay, now, Um, I, uh, I think I'm going to take this off. No. Okay, I'm going to move my stitch, and I am going to knit through all of these stitches. And on my other side. Trying not to get that first one terribly tight. It's, it's a little bit harder when you are working on the magic loop like I am, because as you can see, my needle is a size eight, but my cable is very thin. And so a lot of times when you start your first row, you will pull too tight. And so it makes that first stitch very tight for when you go to slip it up over your needle again. And that's, I've done that. I usually don't do that like I have this this time. Okay, so what you want to keep doing is you want to, and again, we're on our first row. I'm going to take you through it one more time. I'm going to knit. And this time I'm going to knit and slip We actually have to fix something because I, I did a mistake, which is okay. Lots of times we do make a mistake. This last stitch before your, um, your marker, just slip it to your right hand needle, drop your marker, slip it back, and then pick up your marker. Because we should have three stitches now, okay, after our marker. Now again, we want to make a right hand leaning stitch. So we pick it up. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space. I'm going to knit in the front. And then I'm going to knit across those three stitches that are just knit stitches. And then we're going to make a left leaning one, which means I go in from the front, pick it up, and then I'm going to knit in the back of that stitch. So what you can see is from my stitch marker, and this is the only one I have to do this, you should have five stitches. The next time you'll go ahead and knit through, and then this will start to become seven, nine, 11, 13, 15 stitches. And so you will do this until your pattern tells you how many stitches you're supposed to have on uh, the gusset marker. Okay, I hope this has helped you. This is the only time that we've had to move this marker because that was my mistake. You should have had you should have had this and then done your um, after you move your marker, then you do your knit left, knit right, you make one. Okay, um, let's do let's do one more just so that just so that we're sure you know how you're doing this. I know we're at 13 minutes and that's okay. Oh, see how tight I've gotten that. I'm I'm a lace knitter and so lace lace needles are a little bit easier <laughs> to not get that first stitch so tight because the needle is not much bigger than your cable. Okay, so we're going to knit one two knit to the end of your row and then turn it. And this is the row that doesn't get a gusset. <laughs> this side, that's the end of our row. Okay, let's turn it, let's do it one more time just so we're sure you know what you're doing. Oh, that went better, okay. I'm just not used to working with heavier yarns. I really like lace work. Okay, so this is our first side. So we're gonna go ahead and knit to our marker.
And then once we get to our marker, we're going to slip our marker to our right hand needle and we would knit all of these stitches because this is an odd row. And we want to go ahead and finish up that. So finish your other side. Oh yeah, it's getting a little easier. <laughs> I just have to be very careful not to do that. And once we get to the beginning, then this will be an even row that we will start working on. And the even rows are the ones where you increase your stitches. Now I've already shown you how to read your patterns so that you know when you're going, because after a while, some of you will be doing three knit row, two knit rows and an increase row. So there will be three rows, but for now we're just doing two. I think until we get to like 11 or 13 stitches. Okay, the easiest way for me to do this is keep my stitches kind of even. And when I knit the first one, I don't pull it very tight. And I've forgotten that because I've been working with lace yarn. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead. This is going to be an even row. Let's knit to our stitch marker. We will move our stitch marker from our left to our right needle, and this is where we're, going, where we're going to make a leaning right stitch. So we come in from the back, grab that first ladder between stitches, and again, if you have to give yourself some space, which I generally do, I just wind it and pull it a little bit so that I have some room to get my needle in. There, I've made my left or my right. I'm going to knit through the rest of these stitches for the gusset. And then we're going to make a left, which means I'm going to take my needle. I'm going in from the front between those two yarns. And then I'm going to knit in the back of that yarn. And so now, if we look at this, we have, after our stitch marker, we have two, four, six, seven. You're going to have odds. And if you look at it this way, you can see you're making a little triangle in there that's starting to look like a triangle. That's going to be the gusset part. Um, if you're doing the beginner, follow your pattern to know how many stitches you should have for your gusset before we get to the top. And once we get to the top, stop, and I will show you how we go ahead and pick up stitches to start finishing working this part. And then we'll have another lesson how to finish your thumb part. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. I hope I didn't mix you up too much by that first little mistake I made. But it's good because once you see everybody makes mistakes when they're knitting and how to fix them. That's an important part is knowing how to fix mistakes that you've made. Okay, um, go ahead and continue your gusset. And then the next, this is for both the beginner and the advanced. It's, it's basically the same um, kind of knitting. And so the next one, then we are going to work together also to finish making the top of our glove. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll be back next time to show you how to go ahead and finish up this part and then start knitting the top the finger part of your gloves. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.